Hi, guys. We're good on time, right? Like way ahead of schedule? Okay. Just checking. Okay, guys, so uh, I put this PowerPoint presentation together. It was my first one I've ever done in PowerPoint, so <clears throat> that was an awesome learning experience in itself. Uh, just first note, you know, be flexible, learn new programs. Who knows, it might pay off in the future like you guys know. Uh, so, yeah, my name is James Schaff. I work at Walt Disney Animation Studios. I'm a modeler there, and uh, it's, it's really awesome, guys. I can't say it enough. Uh, before I get started here, I just my story is a bit different from you guys because I came I came from a military background. So, if are there any veterans here? Awesome, that's what I like to see. Cool. Uh, you guys know that it's a totally different life, you know, being in the military and getting out of the military and making that decision to get out of the military is a huge decision. But in following your dreams, you guys are here now. So I take my hat off to you guys, if I had a hat. But um, it is, it's, a, it's a great decision for you guys to follow your dreams. Uh, good on you. And uh, thank you for your service. And uh, looking forward to maybe meeting you guys after, after the presentation. So I'm going to start off talking about my, my journey, where I started and uh, this takes me back to uh, second grade. So, um, you know, being a young child, I was, I was into drawing, probably like most of you guys. Uh, I, I don't know how or why my mom kept this drawing, but I'm glad she did. Um, even for second grade, I was like, yeah, that's not too bad. You know, I, he's, he has five fingers, but he has only three toes. So, you know, <laughs> there's always room for improvement. Uh, you know, the perspective is not so good. Uh, you know, there's some issues there, but, you know, we all got to start somewhere. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is if you look up in the TV, you see this, uh, I imagine it to be some sci-fi action TV show this poor guy is watching. Um, so that takes me to my next thought of, like, what really, like, lit that fire in me as a young child and it may be for some of you guys. I think most of you guys are pretty much younger than I am. Uh, but it was Star Wars. I mean, that was like it. You know, I, I saw the movie, five years old. I was in the theaters. And, like, it stuck with me for the rest of my life. So it's, like, it's awesome. I'm not, like, a super crazy fan, but I do love Star Wars because it has such a special place, you know, in my life. So just seeing, you know, the... The amazing work that they did back then. You know, imagine, you know, you're a five-year-old kid and you see that cool stuff on there. It, it's something like you don't even, even understand how they do that stuff. You're just in such amazement. Uh, so, uh, growing up, of course, I was into drawing and uh, it's something I, I did on and off, but it wasn't until I got to high school where I finally felt like this is something I really, really love to do. Uh, I got to the point where it was really the only reason I wanted to go to high school. So I, uh, unfortunately, my, or fortunately, my two art classes were at the end of the day. So I knew I'd have to sit through like six classes, five or six classes just to get to art. So like, you know, one of you guys mentioned, you know, you're sitting in the back of class and you're just zoned out and you're drawing and drawing and drawing. Needless to say, I didn't get very good grades, but I did very well in art class. Um, I did so well, I ended up uh, getting the uh, Most Outstanding Artist Award for my senior year in high school. And that really meant a lot to me. You know, I was like, man, my hard work is paying off. Um, and even back then, as far as hard work goes, I was the, that nerdy art guy who would like stay after class, like after school. And my teacher would just say, well, you know, just lock and close up the door and turn off the lights when you leave. And off she would go, and I'm just you know, doing what I love to do. Uh, so there was many times where I'd be walking home with my massive homemade portfolio, you know, going back home and keep working on my art. So I ended up graduating, and at the time, my father was in the military also, and we were living in Okinawa, Japan. Uh, beautiful, beautiful place, amazingly fond memories of it. 
And uh, the downside being is it was just so much of a disconnect between over there and the states. So that disconnect, uh, it was a major obstacle for me, feeling like, how do I pursue uh, this, this wanting, this dream, this talent that I feel like God gave me? Well, I ended up coming back to the States, and this was pre-internet days, by the way, guys. You know, you just couldn't get on Google, like, uh, cool schools to learn art. So it was like, it was too big of an obstacle for like an, an 18, 19-year-old kid. You guys now, you guys got it made. Um, so I ended up coming back to the States and didn't know what to do with myself. So I went and I saw the recruiter. I said, how soon could you get me in? I think he said like two weeks. I signed the paper and off I went. Uh, tried, to, tried to keep up with the art while I was in the military, but it soon shriveled up and that part of me felt like it just died. I had friends that, were, that, I, that I was with in the military that would see my old work and they'd be like, dude, what are you doing? You know, you shouldn't be in the Air Force. And I was just like, yeah, whatever, you know, just kind of blow it off. But it always stuck in my mind that I need to do something with this. <clears throat> so uh, how it works in the military is you do a, it's like a contract. So at the end of my four-year contract, I end up saying, you know what, still don't feel like I know what I'm going to do with myself. I'm going to do it again. So I ended up staying in a little over nine years in the, in the military. <clears throat> great experience, met great people, got to travel around. And as far as the traveling goes, I got sent over to uh, go to Kuwait. So we're landing in Kuwait, and I put up the window blinds, and I look out the window, and I see nothing but, like, desert, and I'm like, all right, like, this is going to be interesting. Uh, but it got my gears turning. You know, it, like, it flipped the switch inside of me. And that can happen, uh, you know, when, you're, when you go to bed and you're trying to go to sleep and you think that 39 miles is the enemy's line. That, that starts to weigh on you pretty heavy and you start thinking about your life and what you're going to do with yourself. And is this really what I want to do? You know, do, do I have any regrets in life? And I kept thinking back to what I really would want to do, something that I totally gave up on. I didn't even try going to school. I just gave up and I joined the military. <clears throat> Not saying that it was a bad thing because there's a lot of good in the military and I know for sure my military time has definitely helped me in this career field. I mean, we're talking like dedication, uh, honesty, integrity, core values that the military treats you or teaches you is something that can be carried on, guys. And when you have that military experience on your resume, it doesn't matter where you go, it's a huge plus. Everybody... They respect you. They know you've gone through some things that none of them have gone through. And they know that you're going to come to work on time. You understand you've you got to play nice with others. Who cares what they look like or where they came from? Everybody is family. And that's one of the huge great things about being in the military is meeting such really, really cool people from all over uh, you know, America. So I was like totally, totally into like being buddies with all my friends. And that was the hardest part for me leaving the military was giving up that family that I had because uh, just traveling around, you, you just make friends with who you, who are, who's next to you. You try to keep in contact, separations happen and you lose contact, but it's always, always good to try to keep in touch with those people who are, who've, you know, been there for you in the past. So, um, moving on. So maybe I approached this uh, a little more, you know, differently than you guys did. So I'm just going to like go through a couple bullet points here. So what did it take for me to land a job as an artist in the entertainment industry? Uh, the first thing I had to do is I had to make that decision. And that was a very, very difficult decision, like I said. You know, uh, sleeping out in the desert in a tent and thinking about I could stay in for less than 10 more years and I could retire and get a retirement pay from this. But then where am I going to be at that point in my life? And then how much would I regret never having followed my dream so following a dream is huge guys I know it sounds a little corny and everyone's like oh if you try hard enough you'll make it I honestly believe if you have that dedication and you have that passion in your heart and you keep trying to better your skills a door is going to open up and when that door opens up you better shove your foot in there as quickly as you can because you don't know when that next one's going to open up and that hardest one is that first door that opens up and uh, I'll be talking about that first door in a second. 
So skills and ability. Um, to even tell you guys more about my military life, they tell you what you're going to do in the military, and they told me I was going to be a plumber. So you can imagine <laughs> how pleased I was to hear that I was going to be a plumber in the, a plumber in Alaska. So I'm like, man, I just got I just got hit with the two worst things anybody could ever tell me in my life. <laughs> so I'm like, this is going to be you know a heck of a ride. So um, after I made that decision of getting out of the military, I was really, really lost, guys. I was like, I've got this passion. I want to be an artist. I didn't even know what kind of artist I wanted to be. And uh, really didn't even, even know that like, like CG was what it was. It, it didn't even cross my mind. So I'm like, well, I like to do stuff with my hands. I like maybe sculpting. I'm like, what do I do? Do I go out to Home Depot and buy like a hammer and a chisel and, and get a big rock and start pounding away I'm like no that you know that that can't be good you know it's going to be a waste of time and money and so I, I took it down to a smaller scale I'm like okay well what if I bought a knife I bought a couple bars of soap and I just start carving things and and uh whittling away at some some uh Irish spring soap I mean it smelled great it was fun to do I'm like I can use it afterwards if it turns out horribly so I'm like, yeah, that's it, that's it. So I just started sculpting some like, some strange abstract uh, shapes, and and I'm like, yeah, yeah you know, I, I kind of like this idea of this whole uh, three dimensional thing. And just by chance, I like went to like um, Office Depot, and they had like this software aisle there, and I ended up coming across some 3D software, and I was just like, man, this looks pretty cool. What is this? And it was a program called Bryce. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with it. Uh, it's for creating 3D environments. And after I felt like I could make some pretty much uh, preset environments real quick, you know, you hit the terrain button and you get to move the sun around. I'm like, oh, man, this is awesome. But I kept wanting more. I'm like, there's got to be more to this. So you could also use primitives in there. So I'm like, ooh, primitive shapes. This is great. So I started to try to make characters out of spheres. And uh, I was going to show you guys that stuff, but, you know, if you really, really want to see it, I'll uh, dig it up and I'll send it to you guys. Um, but moving, <laughs> moving on, I knew to, uh, to, to achieve my goal, I'd have to have dedication. And like I said, having that military mindset, I, I had that goal in mind. I knew what I wanted to do. Then I knew I needed to learn whatever I could to try to achieve my goal. So Bryce, I feel like I squeezed it for everything I possibly could. I'm starting to look online. I'm like, man... There's some cool stuff out there. End up coming across Maya and Lightwave. Like, yee, which one do I learn? And uh, Maya at the time was like $6,000 and Lightwave was considerably cheaper. I'm, oh, I think I'm going to learn Lightwave. So I end up getting Lightwave and just trying to teach myself as much as I possibly could. Uh, I think maybe we've all been there, maybe. You know, just trying to do the on your own, like, yeah, I got this, you know. This was pre-YouTube. So it's like you're looking up how do I make a character? And it, it was pretty challenging, you know, trying to find something I feel like really, like, was feeding me what I wanted to be fed. Um, so at about this time, I felt like I, I was approaching uh, modeling, like, with a really technical eye because the plumbing background, um, you have to have a certain eye for certain things. You have to start looking at things and say, okay, well, if I'm going to put plumbing in this place, well, I'm probably going to need, you know, six feet of pipe and blah, 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 blah. So you, you start imagining what this thing is supposed to look like in the end. So those skills transferred over into the 3D world. So as I was building things on my own, I started to pick up everything. I'm like, well, I'm going to model a phone. I'm going to model a chair. I'm going to model this. And I literally was grabbing things just within reach grabbing a tape measure. How big is this? How wide is it? And that's, that's how I taught myself as much as I possibly could, but that still wasn't enough. Um, and about that time, uh, I had a different job. I wasn't in CG, and I ended up meeting my wife. And we got married, and she's like, you know what? You've got something here, but she's a huge promoter of education. She said, I think you need to go to school. You know, a professional school that can teach you this stuff, to help you reach that goal. It's like, wow, I, going back to school wasn't like the number one thing I wanted to do. I, I didn't really like school in the beginning. 
but I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's probably right, you know, if I, you know, with that, having that end goal in mind, I knew I was going to have to go to school. So what I end up doing is I end up uh, going, trying to get my bachelor's degree. So I got two years into my bachelor's degree, and I was like, no way, this is not giving me what I wanted. I felt like, it's a good analogy, I felt like I was like going to a, like a vegetarian buffet, and I wanted like, I wanted like ribs and steak, and you know, I wanted like the meaty stuff, I wanted something to chew on, so I'm like, man, there's got to be some more out there, and then I kept running across these Noman DVDs, I'm like, man, these DVDs are awesome. And, and at the time, I was living in Ventura, which is about an hour away from here. So I'm like, man, what's this Noman thing? And, oh, they got a school? I'm like, this is crazy. Where's the school? It's in Hollywood. I'm like, man, this is it. So I uh, ended up coming out on a tour. Uh, Brian gave me and my wife a tour, and we're walking around this school. I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. You know, the whole place looks like an M.C. Escher drawing, and... <laughs> It's kind of scary, but in a cool way. And so we go up into the uh, one of the labs. I, I, it's like lab two or three, and uh, we walk in there. All the lights are off, and it's like the room is full of people. And all I see is like the glow of monitors on people's faces. And, and I was just like, "Oh my goodness!" I was like, "This is it." You know, <laughs> I'm like, "These are my people." You know, it was like, it's like a dungeon. You know, it's like this is it. You know, I didn't see any like cuffs or chains, you know, having them glued to the computers. Everybody's on their own free will sitting there just making cool stuff. And I was like, man, this is it. This is, this is where I want to be. Uh, and then I had to make that decision. I'm like, man, can I even get in this place? Because, this, you know, I saw Noman as being like the top, top notch school to be. Uh, so I just took everything I possibly could. I uh, made a portfolio, and uh, I submitted it to Noman, and really just crossing my fingers, like, man, I hope they accept me. And uh, while I was doing that, I was like, you know what, I still want to test it out. I want to, you know, see what these classes are about, see what the school is about, see if I like the curriculum. And uh, I took two classes, and uh, in this class uh, was uh, a really cool guy, you know, I don't know, you don't know anybody when you're an extension student, so I meet this guy, and Hey, man, how's it going? Oh, going good. So we're chitting, chatting back and forth each time we, we get to class. And, and he's like, hey, do you have any stuff I can, I can check out? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, showing him my stuff that I taught myself and a little bit that I, I did, you know, to get my bachelor's degree. He's like, oh, that stuff's pretty cool. And I'm like, well, do you have anything you can show me? He's like, yeah. And he pulls up this crazy creature. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, what is this guy doing here? So he was a working professional. And I was just like, man, this is cool. We're actually taking a class with someone who, like, works in the industry. I'm like, this, is, this school is getting better and better. Um, so I ended up finishing up those two classes, got accepted into Noman. And I was, like, approaching Noman like boot camp, CG boot camp. It really is. It, it, that's how I see it, guys. In fact, I was telling my wife earlier, I think Noman is harder than boot camp. I'm not lying to you. And I guarantee you, you're going to walk out with, like, amazing, amazing work. You're going to produce stuff coming to Noman that you wouldn't even have a clue you could possibly do. And you're going to put yourself through some things that you probably couldn't imagine either. You know, there might be some nights where you don't get sleep. It happened to me. My wife was nice enough to drive me all the way to Ventura, drop me off, go back home, come back at the end of the day and pick me up. Uh, just amazing support from my wife. So a huge thanks to her. Just Definitely wouldn't be here uh, without her. So education. So my first job in the industry. My first job in the industry, I was uh, end of first term, and I get a phone call. And I pick up the phone. Don't really recognize the number, like you guys say. You, know, like, so you get a strange blocked call, and like, I never pick up phone calls from like, numbers I don't know. I'm like, yeah, who is this? And I am picking up. And he's like, hey, man, it's D. What's going on? I'm like, oh, not much. How's it going? Well, long story short, he says, hey, would you like to come out to the, the place that I work and show my supervisor your work? He'd like to take a look at your stuff. I'm like, man, this is awesome. You know, how cool is this? Get some professional feedback. I said, yeah, uh, you know, you tell me the time, I'll be there. So I tell my wife, we're like super excited that I'm going to get to show my artwork. I go to like Kinko's. I'm printing out prints of everything I possibly think could could that needed some uh, feedback on, which was all of it. 
Um, so I get to this place, and uh, it's pretty like just, you know, it just looks like, kind of looks like Noman, you know, it doesn't really raise an eyebrow or anything, and I walk in, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to see, and his name's Darnell, call him D, and uh, I'm here to see D, and they're like, oh yeah, just a minute, so I end up going back into this office area, and there's, you know, a row of computers, I'm like, oh no, this is pretty cool. Uh, long story short, um, that what I would thought was just showing my artwork for some feedback ended up turning into a job interview before I even knew it. So it was like amazingly bizarre. And I was, as it was happening, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, this is a job interview. And uh, it, it w- if I would have known it was a job interview going in, I would have been so nervous. Um, so the guy that I was showing my work to, his name is Shane, and he's one of the owners of the company. And he says, hey, you know what? Why don't we take a step in the, in, back in the workshop and uh, I'll show you around and we can keep talking. So he walks me over to this like inconspicuous store like this and he opens up this door. He's like, yeah, go ahead. And I walk in and it was like Santa's workshop. And, and what I find out later, this is legacy effects. The, you know, pre- previously Stan Winston Studios. So lesson, guys, do your homework before you go anywhere. Who cares who you're talking to? Find them on LinkedIn. Find out where, where they work, where they worked. Yeah. Do your homework, guys. I did not do my homework, so please do so. Um, so it's like Iron Man suits galore, and there's a T-Rex head coming out of the wall, and I'm just like... You've got to be kidding me. And there's like people plugging hairs into masks. And I was like, man, I've gotten myself into something crazy here. And he pulls out this concept and he's like, do you think you can model this? And I looked at it and it was this crazy robot. And I was just like, I think I could model it, but I think it would take me time. And he's like, mm. and he's like all right. He's like, well, you know what? Um, you know, we're going to think about it, and we'll, we'll give you a call. And I thought it was like the typical Hollywood thing where it's like the don't call us, we'll call you thing. So I just, you know, chalked it up as a great experience. I went back home, I told my wife, and it was a really exciting time. Uh, that was like a Wednesday, and, and like the next day he calls back. He's like, hey, we'd like you to start on Monday. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, no. I'm like, I just, you know, I'm like end of term one. I'm in a two-year program. This guy wants me to work on what I find out, Iron Man 2. I'm like, this is unreal. I'm like, do I quit Noman? Go full-time there? And the guys there are amazing guys, amazing artists. Uh, They said, you know what, we're going to work with you. You know, if you're not at school, you come here and work. Which was, like, the nicest thing ever. I mean, I don't know many studios that would be able to work with you like that. And it was an amazing, amazing uh, blessing. And while I was there, they give me my own computer. I had two monitors. I was used to being at home with like one monitor. And I'm like, man, I'm living it up. You know, the monitors weren't really big, but I look over to the guy next to me. He's got big old monitors. I'm like, well, hey, you know, it's all good, you know. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and, I, and I'm starting on this crazy uh, drone and, and the guy next to me, he's like, all I hear is like clicks of the keyboard and mouse is going. I'm just, I keep looking over. I'm like, whew, man, this guy's crazy. So I ended up sitting next to Ian Joyner. I don't know if you guys know Ian Joyner, but this is like the guy that is like, I don't know if you want to sit next to him on your first day. You know, it's like, oh man, this is intimidating. And then out comes the office and it's Scott Patton. If you guys know who Scott Patton is. And then of course, uh, working behind me was uh, Darnell. So I'm like, man, this is intense. I'm like, first job in the industry. I'm working on a featured film, uh, working with amazing people on a crazy robot. I'm like, man, this is nuts. So this was the Hammer drone. Uh, And due to scheduling, they had to mix some things around. And me and two of the other guys, we ended up having to tag team this thing to get it done in time. Uh, It was just an amazing, amazing experience just modeling it, working with Ian and Darnell and Scott Patton. It was, it was really, really an amazing experience. Then it just took it to the next level then when they're like, okay, you know what we're going to do next? We're actually going to 3D print this thing. Like, oh, that's neat. I thought they're going to do like a little 12-inch figure. They're like, no, we're going to print this life-size. Uh, this guy was like seven feet tall. And it was so awesome to see because they'd be like, hey, we got the shipment of the parts. And then they would bring the box in and it's piecing this guy together. And it's just like, 
ooh, cool legs, and then like, oh, cool torso, and then like, oh my goodness, it was unreal, and that was my first experience with 3D printing. So when you're working on something and you can actually like see it in real life, it, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, so that was my first job in the industry, guys. Just, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just insane. It's really, it's unreal. Um, so a word to everybody who is going to Noman. Um, working and going to Noman at the same time is insane. And uh, I did talk to the school before starting, and they're like, we highly, highly, highly recommend that you don't work while you're going to school. Um, I didn't listen. Um, <laughs> I was always looking for, for opportunities. Um, but it is definitely something I would not recommend to you guys. I, I put myself through a lot. Like I said, luckily, you know, I had my wife. Um, I was sleeping probably about three hours a night, uh, driving at least three to four hours, just commute time, running around like a chicken with my head cut off, but just smiling every minute. Um, and so right when I finished Iron Man 2, I, uh, I was like, whew, finally I can concentrate on school. And then, what, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then one of, one of my uh, uh, classmates, uh, Suzanne Kim, uh, she, she was working at a different place, and she's like, hey, um, would you be interested in working on Toontown Online? And I didn't even know what Toontown Online was, and she's like, it's, it's uh, Disney. I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> so, like I say, opportunities come your way. You seriously got to balance it out, and sometimes you just got to jump on it. You might not know, have the, you know, the exact skills that they're looking for, uh, but believe me, you learn uh, <laughs> as quickly as possible. Um, so Toontown Online. So it, the interesting thing about going uh, from Iron Man 2 to Toontown Online, uh, going from like extremely high res detail, uh, going down to extremely low uh, res, like super low poly. Like I would make something cool and they'd be like, ah, can we bring it down a little bit more? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. So I'd reduce the poly count. Yeah, let's bring it down a little bit more. Uh, okay. And then we would also get to texture. So it was a great opportunity because I was getting to do environment modeling and texturing. Um, and just uh, talking on that, I highly recommend that you guys, you, you mentioned that like, don't put your, all your eggs in one basket. I recommend that you guys try to feel comfortable with doing a couple different things. Uh, because let's say uh, modeling dries up, you know, the job market kind of dries up. You gotta, you know, you gotta pay the bills and feed or, or eat. So you, know, you gotta have something you can fall back on. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so my next job was, oh, then I graduated. Finally I, <laughs> finally, I graduated. So about half the time I was going to Noman, I was working. Uh, it was tough. So I graduated, and now I was like, man, now what's going to happen? Uh, and I had a little bit of a dry spell there, but next thing I know, um, I get contacted by a friend, and he says, hey, would you be interested in talking to someone at Nickelodeon? Like, you know it. So I sent them my stuff. Next thing I know, I'm working at Nickelodeon on Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. I was there for about a year and 10 months, almost two years. So while I was there, got to do character modeling, got to do blend shapes, UVs. Uh, it was really a, a great place to work, very technical place to work. You know, some people kind of maybe write off working for, on, a, on a kid show. It's like, yeah, it's a kid show. You know, how tough can it be? Uh, very, very technical. Uh, I learned a lot of great things there that I still use uh, today. Uh, just fun characters to work on. Uh, there are quite a few pigs, so I didn't want to show you guys too many, so I picked the best pig of the bunch. Uh, fun part about working there, we're doing the blend shapes. Um, facial blend shapes are uh, all pretty challenging. Uh, but I, th I think it's a skill that I'm glad that I was able to learn. So after uh, what came to an end of the TV show, it didn't get picked up for another season. And like Sonia was saying, you know, it's when the end is there, you're just like, what do I do? You know, you feel like, a, like an orphan and nobody loves you. And you know, <laughs> like no, nobody wants, wants me to work for them. So... Uh, and this is where I'm going to recommend that you guys really keep your vision open. You know, don't, don't have tunnel vision and try to pigeonhole yourself into, you know, just games or just this or just that. 
Uh, it's one thing I've tried to do with my career is really, really try to keep a broad view of, of what I would be willing to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm searching the net, you know, I'm looking for jobs, and I come across a job for sketchers. They're looking for a modeler. So those are first thing I, I wanted to do is I wanted to model. So I needed a job, I applied for it, and uh, that kind of, as I talk about these jobs, I'm going to be talking about like the connections, how important connections are. Uh, Skechers was, look, they were looking for two artists, and they hired one other artist already. Um, and that artist was looked at for trying to find that second artist. Uh, his name is Hector De La Torre, and he's a Noman grad. So, you know, like, what are the chances that a Noman grad gets hired for a shoe company and they're looking to find someone else. Well, he saw I had Noman on my, on my uh, resume. He saw my reel. He knew if I went to Noman. That got me in the door, guys. Noman is a huge, huge weight on your resume. If you're taking individual classes, put it on your, on your resume. Put it on your reel. Uh, because there are so many people who have gone to Noman, it's really, really something that stands out to the rest of us who are in the industry. Uh, so I recommend put it on your reel. So they called me in, and I met with the head of R&D, and he, the guy's real cool. He's like, you know what? I don't really know a whole lot about this field, but the other guy said you went to the school and that we should have you in for an interview. Next thing I know, I'm modeling a shoe. <laughs> and, they, and they literally handed me a shoe. They're like, here you go. We need that modeled. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. So uh, I took my phone, I took some pictures of it, and started modeling it. It was a really, really great experience. Um, it helped really train my eye. You, you will never look at shoes again if you do a job like this. And it was interesting working there because the, the whole vibe of the place was totally different than like Nickelodeon and, and Legacy FX. Uh, just that it, it was felt really corporate and it was super quiet and it was like almost like a little uncomfortable. Uh, Nickelodeon, we were always like laughing and having a good time and making jokes and I go to this place and you're just kind of sitting there and you're whispering and so it was a different environment but I was doing what I loved. It was, you know, pushing me, you know, further and further into the career I wanted. I uh, got to do modeling and texturing uh, on this shoe. Uh, got to learn a new, new software. Uh, once again, you know, when a place says, hey, do you know how to use this software and you don't know how to use it? I, I say be honest, guys. Uh, be honest, but throw out there, I'm willing to learn whatever you guys have for me. You know, you guys want me to learn this program, I'm on it. Uh, so I really enjoyed this job. I, I enjoyed the level of detail. Uh, the level of detail was actually creating stitches for the shoe. Um, I'm, you know, pretty intense with my modeling, so I'm like, on the real shoe, I'm counting how many of these gray little squares run from toe up to here. Uh, accuracy is extremely important, especially when you start getting into products. Uh, you have to make the object look like their product or you won't have a job. Um, so it was really, really a, a super, super cool experience. Um, since leaving there, I got to go back and do more freelance work for them. So uh, on that note, one thing I will say, and I think you guys will agree also, whenever your time ends at a place, as sad as you might be, walk out with a smile and walk out shaking hands and be very appreciative of that experience and let everybody know that uh, because that is something that's going to be a lasting impression on, on, that, on the people because that's all they have to remember. They'll be like, you know what, this was a cool guy. He did a good job while he was here. He was fast. He gave us quality work. Let's have him back again. So after I finished up at, uh, while I was at Skechers, I got contacted by a place you guys might know, uh, the Noman School of Visual Effects. <laughs> and I got contacted, and, and they asked me if I wanted to be an instructor here. And I was like, holy smokes, this is a huge honor. Uh, you know, I love the school. I loved what they've done for me. Uh, and I, I enjoy, personally, I love being an instructor. I love passing on the knowledge. I love pushing my students, critiquing their work. I want you guys to succeed I want your guys' dreams to come true, and I try to, honestly, I try to help my students out as much as I possibly can. 
Uh, so the class they wanted me to teach was hard surface modeling uh, one online. So this is a car. I think most of us probably have modeled a car. Uh, so I did a demo, and I modeled this car for that class. Uh, I took it to the next level. I got into uh, doing key shot and rendering and all that fun stuff. And uh, during that time, I got a call from uh, a buddy I went to school with, Jared. I'm going to kill his last name, Kerchevsky. Uh, awesome, crazy concept artist. Uh, and he gave me a call. He was working at Aaron Sims. He's like, hey, man, are you looking for work? I'm like, yep, let's do it. Got in, got to work on the Marvel experience. I got to do uh, modeling and texturing. Uh, the, that job was crazy in itself. We were working with AK maps, which are pretty insane. Uh, the Marvel experience, in case you guys don't know what it is, it uh, was a, uh, basically a traveling theme park. So it bounced around uh, San Diego, a couple other places, uh, and they're doing a lot of projecting on the domes. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, you know, I just take opportunities when they come my way. So working in, the, like, the, the quote-unquote fashion industry, you know, I'll do it. You know, work in theme park, okay. It's all good to me. I, I like modeling. And the thing about modeling is, um, recommendation to you guys, when you go into an interview, I don't think they do it on purpose, but they ask you some questions that felt a little bit tricky to me. So when they ask you, like, oh, do you like to do hard surface or organic modeling? You know, it's like, I like to model. You know, that's, I don't care what it is, I like modeling. And that's what I tell them. Do you like environments or do you like characters? I like it all. You know, be positive. Um, you know, of course, as I said earlier, be honest with people. Uh, but show that willingness to, to give them what they're looking for. I uh, got to work at PSYOP. Uh, PSYOP, mainly they do a lot of um, commercials. Uh, they did a game trailer, and that's what they called me in for. Uh, interesting thing about PSYOP, PSYOP call, uh, contacted me. They're like, uh, hey, do you think you could come in for the day and work for us? And I was like, for a day? It's, it's an interesting call. Uh, I wasn't working at the time, so I'm like, yeah, let's, let's uh, see what happens. Went in for a day. They said, well, do you think you can come back tomorrow? I'm like, sure. <laughs> do you think you could come back another day? Sure. Well, do you think we, we could book you for next week? Absolutely. And it just kept getting better and better. So I got to work on uh, this game trailer uh, for the game called ReCore. It uh, comes out next spring. Don't know, know if you guys saw the uh, trailer for it uh, for E3. Looks like a really amazing game. It is only going to be on Xbox, which is pushing me to want to buy an Xbox. <laughs> Hints. Um, so what I got to do on that, I got to do um, uh, prop modeling, uh, UVs. I uh, got to work on the high-res version of the dog here. Um, got to work with a really cool team over there. Really, really great people at, at PSYOP. Uh, cool thing, uh, the difference between working for a, a, a commercial place or quote-unquote commercial place, the turnaround time is extremely, extremely fast. So you, you have to like push this stuff out, uh, which was kind of exciting to me. It was, it was fun. Uh, keep moving through these. So I got to do uh, cricket wireless uh, environments and prop modeling. Uh, got to do some, prop mo uh, some product modeling. Once again, you know, keeping... Keeping on top of things, get good variety for your demo reel. Uh, got to work on the Tecate commercial. This was a really, really cool one to work on. It was uh, the, Tecate was trying to go through a bit of a rebranding uh, for their logo. So they came up with this idea where their old logo would transform into their new logo. Uh, it was a lot of fun to work on. Once again, more, a lot of technical modeling and a, uh, a great team to work on. Uh, got to, you know, be did lettering, uh, the, what do you call this here, billboard um, support, uh, just all these fun bits and pieces, got to do UVs, uh, there were a couple other modelers were working on this intricate stuff here. Uh, and then I end up getting uh, an opportunity, I, I threw a shot in the dark, and um, Walt Disney Animation Studios has a, a talent development program. And if anybody in here wants to work at Disney, I highly suggest you try to do that by getting through the talent development program. 
So the talent development program, what that is, is they take people from different, uh, it's for recent graduates, and what you do is you submit your demo reel, and if you are accepted, you get put into uh, their program. It's like a mentorship. So uh, I got uh, invited to come there, and it was an amazing, amazing experience. You get a mentor, a mentor or mentor assigned to you, and um, Dylan Ekron, I don't know if you guys know him, awesome artist. He was my mentor, also a Noman graduate. And uh, the cool thing about the talent development program is, and working at Disney, is everybody is helping each other out. So what, what turned into a, um, turned into one mentor, next thing you know, I feel like I had the whole team of Disney modelers who are very open to give me feedback and help me try to be the best I could be. So uh, going through this real quick, uh, we got to do one environment and one character. So this is the one environment. This was an old unused concept for Tangled. And then uh, Corey Loftus, he did uh, three concepts for each of us. Three modelers went through the uh, talent development program. And uh, this guy was really, really fun to work on. Uh, it, he was untextured. I went back, I wanted to texture him that he was so cool to work with. Um, then I, they had a review and they said, you know what, you know how to play nice with others, you do good work, we'd like you to stay here and we'd like you to uh, become an apprentice and work on Big Hero 6. So you guys can imagine how I felt about that. And the cool part was at the time the uh, talent development program was on the first floor and the modeling team was on the second floor so there's like this physical movement that I get to move upstairs with the big boys. I'm like, oh man, this is great. <laughs> So I get to sit up there with the, you know, all the crazy talented people upstairs. So I uh, got to work on, you know, one of the first things that they gave me to work on was just some 3D lettering. Uh, this uh, building back here was modeled by Kevin Hudson, who was an instructor of mine while I was at Noman. Next thing I know, I'm working with Kevin Hudson, which is pretty crazy. When you start working with people who have, who have taught you, you're like, man, this is a dream come true. You know, you idolize these people, and when you get to start uh, seeing them every day, you're like, ah, I, th I think I'm, I'm reaching my goals here. Um, another thing I got to do, I got to work on the crowd system. There are quite a few uh, crowd characters inside of uh, Big Hero 6, so as a part of that team, uh, creating a lot of different uh, body shapes. Uh, so I worked, got to work on the character team. Uh, doing that, got to work on uh, making the clothes for the characters, uh, which was a really, really great opportunity there. Got to learn more new software. Uh, started getting tasked with a bit more complex props, so I got to model the microphone there, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you start looking at a wire meshed microphone, and it's all like crazy woven together. Um, I racked my brain and then finally figured it out and I was like, yes! It, was, it felt like a huge accomplishment. Uh, then they gave me this tower to create. Uh, now they said this tower has to uh, actually be taken apart and put into a pile because the microbots are going to create this tower. So it literally had to look like if it were real, it could be pieced together. Um, my plumbing experience once again came back to... <laughs> To, to help me with this project. Uh, so other things that I do at uh, Disney is uh, set dressing. So they gave me this shot and they was like, okay, well we need you to make this look cool. Um, so more uh, experience about my plumbing, uh, which is cool because for me personally, if I'm watching a film and I see something that is off with the plumbing, I'm like, oh, come on. You just, you just took me out of the experience. So I was like being, I was being like super technical about like the, how the AC lines are ran and the uh, roof drains and how long the pipes are, you know, that connect to each other, you know, crazy plumbing stuff that you guys don't care about. Um, but things that, the point of detail that I was getting to was, uh, you know, we have a broken window over here on the left side. So in that process, I'm like trying to create a story, and that's one thing I tell my students. You want to create a story with all your work. Uh, so I, I see a broken, uh, broken window, so I start putting broken glass down here. Uh, it, it can't be seen very well, but I know it's there. And it totally made sense to me. Uh, so in getting, like, 
totally sucked into your work, I think it just adds to it. People might not notice it. Uh, and sometimes that's a good thing when they don't notice it because if it, if it sticks out, some, sometimes it's like, you know, the old sore thumb. Um, military life, once again, came back to help me out. Had to work on the, uh, the hat there. Uh, that is almost exactly like an Air Force blues hat we'd have to wear with our nice uniforms. So had a bit of experience there. And then one of the last things I worked on on Big Hero 6 was uh, this hallway in Fred's mansion. It was really big. Uh, had some nice challenges to it. Uh, modeled everything in that environment except for the chandeliers. Those were made by Kevin Hudson. Uh, but some really, really fun stuff. Some really ornate uh, furniture, uh, this, uh, there's some other cool stuff over there, and just really, really fun stuff, guys. It was an amazing, amazing project to work on, and uh, uh, my time at, at the end of Big Hero 6, the project was kind of winding down, and, uh, you know, we all have been there before, project's winding down, some people stay, some people don't. I uh, didn't get to stay, and, you know, I was pretty crushed. I was like, man, this is Disney. I, I do not want to leave. Uh, but once again, you know, you put that smile on you. You be appreciative to people. Uh, you walk out having worked as hard as you possibly could. And then probably about seven or eight months later, I get, a phone, I get an email from uh, one of the recruiters at Disney. And he is asking me if I would be interested in coming back. And you can't say no to Disney, right? So next thing I know, they told me I'm going to work on Zootopia. Have, anybody know about Zootopia? Can I see hands? I want to see hands. Okay, most of us. All right, cool movie. Comes out next March. Um, fuzzy characters and clothes, good stuff. So you got to see it. Uh, so I was like, man, this is going to be an awesome one. I thought maybe my experience from working on Kung Fu Panda, Zootopia, perfect combo. Uh, but then he contacted me a couple days later, and he's like, I've got some news for you. I was like, oh, my God, they don't need me. Like, like you're actually going to go on to our new film called Moana. And uh, that's where I've been. I've been on Moana since uh, about February, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm on the environment team there. Uh, tons of really, really cool stuff. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful film, guys. Uh, that's going to be coming out next November. Okay, so um, going through these bullet points, we're good on time? Okay. Ten more? Five more, okay. Real quick then. Uh, rewards for working in the entertainment uh, industry. Uh, working on amazing, challenging projects. You guys have seen that. All different kinds of opportunities out there for you. Being a part of a creative team. Working elbow to elbow with people like Ian Joyner. Uh, having someone like Zach Petrock as your lead. Uh, these are people that you hear about and when you work with them it is very motivating and a, a good stress um, shared knowledge like I said guys you get into this industry people are really open to helping you out if you don't know how to do something you know suck up your pride and ask somebody hey man how did you do that or what would you recommend that I do here and people are really really open with their their information uh, lasting contacts. Those contacts are going to be extremely important, guys. Uh, challenges that await new graduates or someone wanting to get into the industry. It's that first job. That first job is probably going to be the hardest one you'll ever try to get. Uh, and once you get it, uh, make the most of it. It might not be something you want to do for the rest of your career, but it's that first job. It's that stepping stone onto the next. Uh, experience requirements. So one thing I want to touch on that is we all have seen job ads who say they require three to five years experience. How painful is that for like a new student who's graduating, who is so hungry to get into the industry, and they see, they see three to five years? It's pretty discouraging. Um, I say forget that, guys. I really do. I say, you know what? Make the best, coolest, highest quality work you possibly can and apply to those jobs. Because all they have to see is one piece on your reel to get you into the door for that interview. And if you've gotten into the door for the interview, you pretty much got the job. I think they're just trying to see what type of a person you are. Competition is high. I don't think I need to stress that, right, guys? We're all kind of like gunning for the same jobs. And job stability. Projects wind up. You've got to keep something going. I highly recommend trying to do freelance as much as you can to keep making those contacts. 
Um, so what does it take to stay in the industry? Flexibility. You might have to uh, move. You might have to commute for four hours a day. I say go for it because you're doing a job that you love. Avoid burnout. Um, that one, one of you guys mentioned that. Work-life balance. Uh, burnout is not good, guys. It will, uh, it will really take its toll on you. Uh, play nice with others. We've talked about that. Continued education, improving skills. Never think you know everything. There's always something to learn. I will, if I live to be uh, 100 years old, I will still be learning something cool and new. Uh, a good support system. You know, that's where I'm talking about my wife. She's been an amazing uh, support system for me. We all have friends. We all have family. Uh, you know, you need people to talk to. You know, we, we, us artists, we are all going through the same thing. Uh, give back to the community. Giving back to the community, I mean by doing events like this. I didn't even have a hesitation in my mind when I was asked to do this event. If I can help inspire at least one of you guys to keep pushing forward, I'm happy. And networking. That's why we're all here. We're here to be inspired. We're here to meet people. We're here to uh, just keep moving forward to reaching our goals. Uh, this is my personal email address. If any of you guys have questions about any of the places that I've worked, uh, I'll try to answer them. If I cannot, I'll let you know. Um, sometimes there's a lot of red tape involved, uh, but I will try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, and that cute guy, that cute guy has gotten me into job interviews. Uh, the concept uh, artist is Kai Spanuth. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Just a Really, really cool guy. And seriously, uh, people love him. I love him. Uh, so I had to put him in there. So once again, guys, uh, I thank you for your time. I thank you for coming. And I'm going to hand it over to Anna. <laughs>